a twelve thousand or fourteen thousand foot car did not yeah. think that way. All they thought was, what is a car payment that I'm going to have to have? You would see the same thing in the mortgage business. Um, what what is the uh, you know how can I afford that house? Nine times out of ten, the customer says, what would the monthly payment be? Not what is the price of the house. So so uh, what what a reference rate is? It's what the price is that a customer thinks is a fair price to pay. I can remember when I was in uh, college, the reference rate for uh, gasoline in the United States was 25 cents a gallon. And you go, well, that's been a long time ago. I said, yeah, well, they had just discovered gas when I was in uh, high school, so there was plenty of it around. But 25 cents. And if somebody charged 30 cents a gallon, you go, 30 cents a gallon? We could never, we could never afford that. A loaf of bread, less than a dollar. If you, if you were charging more than a dollar for a loaf of bread, the, the consumer would go, not a fair deal. I'm going to go find one for less than a dollar. So with that being said, what are some of the things that banks did to capitalize on reference rates? And I'll start out by saying the first car loans that Philippe and I did were 12 or 24-month car loans. I can remember when we started doing 24-month car loans, and we go, boy, that's two years, right? And, and American cars in those days didn't really last two years. <laughs> so you're taking some, uh, some technology risk in those. And then we went from 24-month car loans to 36-month car loans. Then we went to 48-month car loans. Then we went to 72-month car loans. And there are actually some 84-month car loans out there today. Why was that? Because the longer the duration, the lower the payment. And the customer didn't care what the car cost. The customer didn't care. Okay, you have a uh, money market account with the bank, and that bank is is paying you 2%, and everybody else in the market is paying you 20%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you all, when I, when I call out and ask your question, and you vote, leave your hand up. How many of you all would uh, pull all your money out if they dropped the rate to 1.9? Raise your hand. 1.8. One point seven, raise your hand. One point six, raise your hand. Two. Okay. One point five. Leave your hands up now. So that's two, <laughs> one, okay, six. Okay? And then I guess the rest would be the nine, right? Yes. Okay. Here's another question. How about if I raise my rate to two point one, who's gonna go take money out of their bank, drive across town? An extra 20 cents. An extra 30 cents. An extra 40 cents. That'd be about seven eight. All right. So so if we were to draw this, what we would find is a curve that looks like this. And that's called price elasticity. Y'all probably studied this in, in school, but it's something that banks don't capitalize on it all. Because what I just described, <coughs> one basis point for you was $450,000. One basis point. For 10 basis points, for $4.5 million, none of y'all would move. The bank makes $4.5 million more money, and y'all would change your buying behavior a bit. For 20 basis points, which is $9 million, so, and, and, I, and, and that's an over-exaggerated case because you don't have 4.5 billion in money market accounts. It's a blend of, of liabilities. But the conceptual model holds true that at the end of the day, there's something called a zone of indifference that, that allows banking to fill in the gap. Did your transaction costs go up or down? And again, your strategy should have been how do I optimize and become more efficient in this? So on average, you should be trying to drive your cost per transaction down. And then on service strategy, the biggest question you have to have is, given the customers I want, am I engineering a delivery system of branches, ATMs, call centers, mobile, internet, the whole uh, uh, spectrum that those customers want? So we're going to talk about some graphs, your balance scorecard, and the reports. So let's look at the reports. First, bank number three 
Uh, we're going to have to send the uh, tax people in because you're just making way too much money. <laughs> I think that what we're going to have to do is come, come up with a, a fine because these greedy banker capitalists are taking all this money from the poor needy individuals in our market. <coughs> so good job, bank number three. Um, everybody uh, should want to know, why is bank number three doing well? Look at the spread here. 259 on assets. 237 on liabilities, so you add that up, you're at almost 500 basis points in net interest market. That's very good. Not only is it good in terms of spread, look at the basis on which it's applied, $7 billion. So they've grown the bank and they've grown it and <coughs> increased spread on both assets and liabilities in the process. Good job. Uh, bank number five.